I want to make sausages again because I had so much fun <laughs> making the Italian sausages that I really want to do this again. I'm fascinated with this process. And one of my goals way back was thinking I want to make chorizo someday. Well, it turns out that chorizo really is just a finely ground, highly seasoned meat paste that comes wrapped in plastic that you discard to, to use the meat. You can make it into sausages, but it's not really meant to be sausages from what I can understand from books. I've read three different sausage books, but what I did find was a recipe for chorizo. Charisse is a Cajun sausage made into sausages with hog casings. It's Spanish origin. The book said it's related to chorizo, but it didn't mention what the relation was. I'm assuming one is in hog casings and one is just the meat. So I want to make this chorizo. One of the things I like about the recipe is that it said that the seasonings and the degree of spicy hotness varies from region to region, from household to household. You can make it any which way you want. So what I did was I cherry picked from three different recipes to come up with a recipe that I think I'm going to like for these chorizo. One thing I do want to talk a little bit about though is the, the pork. I finally found some pork butt. I had never bought pork butt before. I went to a half dozen different stores before I fought, finally found it. I assumed <laughs> pork butt was like, you know, the rear quarter panel of a pig. It's not. It's the shoulder with the bone in. And it got its name because it was a less quality cut of meat. So they would just pack a bunch of it to sell cheap into a wooden crate called a butt. And that's where it got the name. A pork butt was a wooden crate full of pork shoulder. And they eventually just took on the name pork butt. So that's what I found. And what I liked about it was it has this nice big piece of plane going overhead. Yeah, I live near the airport. This is, it really is a trailer park, folks. Um, it had a nice big piece of, of um, <laughs> that always makes me laugh, has a big piece of fat on the outside. And that's one of the things you need with sausages is you've got to get enough fat into them, about 20% fat to give them a flavor and a juiciness. Some of these recipes say to buy additional fat, like pork fat back, and grind it up and add it to the meat if the meat is too lean. In this case, the pork, pu pork butt that I bought had a nice piece of fat on it. So I think it's going to make good sausages. Let's start making these chorizo. To save some time, last night I cubed up my pork meat about three quarters of an inch, an inch pieces. That's two to two and a half centimeters. You can see the nice pieces of fat in there. And I lined a tray with parchment paper. And I'm going to lay this out, hopefully on a single layer. I have about two and a half pounds of meat here, which is 1.1 kilograms. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this tray in the freezer for about 20 to 30 minutes because that freezing will solidify that fat a little bit and help it to pass through the meat grinder more easily. The recipe, one of the recipes called for a tablespoon of brandy. I went to my shelf where I have my cooking alcohols. I have two different kinds of brandy over there, but then I saw this. This is absinthe. And the reason why this attracted me is because one of the possible ingredients was aniseed has a licorice flavor to it. Well, that's what they use to flavor absinthe. So rather than using brandy, I'm going to use a little bit of absinthe in my sausages. I've got my setup now for grinding meat. I have my meat grinder attachment set to my KitchenAid. This is not a KitchenAid product. It's a Smokehouse Chef all stainless steel grinder that I bought on Amazon. I just checked the price. It's currently $179 with tax and shipping. It's going to be up to close to $200. All right, I'm ready to start grinding meat and fat. This has been in the freezer, so it's semi-frozen. It should go through the machine pretty well. All right. 
right, there's the last of my meat pretty much through the machine. There's all my ground meat. I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator and then we'll start talking about spices. Into a large bowl now. This is two teaspoons of salt. I happen to be using kosher salt. It's what I've got. One teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Two tablespoons of chili powder. Any kind is warm or as mild as you prefer. One teaspoon of one half teaspoon. One half teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. And then I have one teaspoon of dry thyme. That's not in any of the other recipes, just one, but I liked it. And then I have one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This is, and I thought it was interesting, this is half a teaspoon of allspice. That was in one recipe and I thought that's interesting. And then one teaspoon of sugar. Now this is roughly one half cup by weight. It was 70 grams of minced onion, fresh minced onion. This was about one quarter of a large onion. And then this is one quarter cup, 15 grams by weight of freshly chopped Italian parsley, flat leaf parsley. And then what I have here is six cloves of garlic that I have to mince up and mix in there. I'm going to use my garlic press for that. Continuing on now, this is one quarter cup of dry red wine. It's about 60 milliliters. I put a rubber glove on because I'm going to be mixing all this up and I don't want the hot spices and so forth to get into the skin of my hand. And by the way, when I see a recipe that says water, like use a quarter cup of water, I think what would be, add more flavor rather than water? So, but this recipe did say red wine and this is my to one tablespoon of either brandy or absinthe. Gonna mix this all up. Already I'm seeing a nice dark color. So that should give my cherise a nice dark color. And then over here I have the meat that's been in the refrigerator. You can unwrap that and start putting this in there. I really like the fact that I'm seeing some fat in this ground pork. All right. And then you want to get this all stirred up. This is going to take two or three minutes to get this all stirred up and distributed. I would say don't crush the meat with your hand because you'll crush the texture out of the meat. You just want to get it all stirred, turned and, and stirred to try to distribute those flavors as evenly throughout the meat as possible. Okay, I like the looks of that. What I've got now is I've got a little, look at the color of my glove there, that would have ended up in my skin. Um, I've got a little skillet heating on the stove. I'm going to put a little piece of this, like this much, in that skillet, cook it well, and then taste it for salt. I can always add more salt to this if I need to. I tasted that little bit of cooked meat. It doesn't need any salt. It's a little bit under salted, but I don't like too much salt anyways. But boy, it has a nice spicy kick to it. So this is going to be good. I'm going to wrap this up now with plastic, put it in the refrigerator. This should sit for two to three hours. You can even let it sit overnight to let those seasonings flavor that ground meat. Okay, <laughs> the next thing to deal with I have a difficult time talking about these without laughing, is the hog casings. My first experience with these was that they reek, <laughs> they smell like rotten fish. I went on the internet and checked, yes, that's normal. I even asked an Italian friend of mine, she's been making her own sausages for years, and she said, yes, it's a normal characteristic, flavor, smell rather, odor, they're fine. So I'm gonna take out two of these, rinse them well, they're packed in a lot of salt, and then put them in cold water, cover the bowl, put it in the refrigerator. They can sit in there while the meat is absorbing flavors in there from the spices. So I have my machine now set up again. My sausage stuff for a meat grinder attachment has been in the refrigerator. I have my casing threaded onto the stuffer tube. I got my meat down below here. As Soon as my meat starts to enter this casing here, 
I'll tie it off with a piece of string, which I have cut over here. And then I'll start filling sausages. I have my cutting board with a piece of parchment paper so that I can spin this around on top of a big pot underneath to hold it up high enough because I don't want to put too much strain on the um, casing. Okay, I can see my meat just starting to come out of my filler tube here. So with my string, I'm going to tie off the casing like so. And then I can start filling my sausages. Okay, let me just explain a little bit what I'm doing here. I'm kind of working slowly but holding back a little bit so that I get this nicely filled and smooth without getting it so full that I run the risk of breaking my casing here. So there is my casing. Got a bit of a crimp right there, but I'm going to fill that up. I'm going to take this, well, actually before I take this off, I'm going to tie it with a string. Like so. Then I can slide this off. And then this little gap right there, I can just move my meat down to fill that. I'm going to be sliding the meat along a little bit later on when I go to shape my individual links. This is ready to set aside. I can do my other casing. So there they are, two completely filled casings. And let me show you how little meat that I had left over. That's all I had left over. I can just fry that up for a little snack for myself. As for these, I'm ready to start sectioning these now into links. One of my recipes said to make the links four inches in length. So on the underside of a piece of parchment paper, I put some lines four inches apart. And how I'm going to use that is thinking I can line it up here on the end, take a pinch here and a pinch there, squeeze the meat, and then start spinning the sausage around. All right? And there's a link. Move this down so line it up with the last one and do another couple of pinches here. Pushing the meat out of the way. Twist it again. So now I'm getting nice even sized sausages. And let's see, the last one I'll be right here. What do you think? There are my sausages. I'm going to cut these extra string lengths off. So there they are. Got my other one to do, but those are my chorice. So I put these in a bowl. I'm going to cover these with plastic, put them in the refrigerator overnight. That'll let the meat and the casings relax a little bit. Hopefully they'll hold their shape better when I separate them. And then I'll start giving them away to my neighbors. I've already promised some of them out already. To finish this video with a tasting clip, what I did was because the sausages are in the refrigerator. I took that little bit of sausage meat that I had left over, I shaped that into a patty, put that in a skillet, and cooked it for myself. That'll give me a good idea, I think, of what my sausages will taste like when they're cooked. And I've got them right here. Let's see what this bit of sausage meat tastes like. A little bit spicy. <laughs> Maybe more than a little bit. But that's what Cherise should be. It should be a little on the spicy side. It's certainly juicy enough. See that little bit of extra fat gave it a nice juicy texture to it. It's a little bit soft and tender. Very, very, very flavorful. Got a lot of flavor to it. So, excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my 
what should I call this? My Charisse Patty. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.